Let's take a look at how to make a dotted line in Illustrator. So we have just a blank canvas here. Now to make a dotted line, we've got to start with a line. There's a couple ways that you can do that. The first way would be to go to the line segment tool. That's just a forward slash. And you can create a line by clicking and dragging out here. Now this line might be totally empty. We need a stroke to make it actually look like a line. So over here in our appearance panel, we can just add like a 10 point stroke to our line and notice how the color is white so obviously we can't see it we could just double click this stroke icon over here and change that color just like that so we have a stroke over here with a 10 point line now you can do this with any you know shape any line you want to make so for instance if we wanted to grab the pen tool the shortcut key is p we could click and drag and make a curved line of sorts. It doesn't really matter. You can even close this shape around. So we're gonna close this guy up. It's gonna look really bad, but I'm gonna show you how you can have a dotted line on both of these, no matter what your object. Now first, let's grab that line up here and we're gonna go to the stroke options. Inside of here, we wanna change the cap to rounded. Then we wanna click on dashed line. Now with the dashed line, you get these little dashes. So if you were trying to make a dashed line, this is how you can do that. And what you wanna do is just adjust the dash length and the gap width or length, I'm not really sure, but it's the space between each dash. What we wanna do here is actually make our dash zero points. And what that's gonna do is basically take the length of that dash and make it zero but it has a rounded cap. So if we add a gap to this, we're gonna see our dotted line appear. So let's just add a gap of 10 and see what that does. I pressed enter there. We can go back into the stroke panel. Now with this, you can press the up and down arrow keys and you'll see the dots, and I can even hold shift to go further. You'll see the dots start to form on your line just like that. So here they are, you've got a dotted line just like that and you can adjust the gap length between, so the space between each dot. Now there's a couple options here where you can preserve the exact dash and gap lengths. It is length, not width. And then you can also align them to the corners and path ends. So let me show you what that looks like. First off, if we wanted to take this dotted line and apply it to this shape, all we need to do is click on this shape, press I for the eyedropper tool, and click on this dotted line. Same thing goes that we made with the pen tool. If we were to make something with the uh, rectangle tool or any of the shape tools like this, and we actually had that selected last, so it created this dotted line around our rectangle anyway. So we've got this rectangle with a dotted line around it. Now the rectangle I think is easier to show you the preserving of the length. So right now under the stroke options, we have preserving the exact dash and gap length selected. We can also select this one here, which basically it adjusts the corners and path ends to fit our rectangle. So now you'll notice that we have dots in the very corners of our rectangle. It adjusted the gap length. It took something close to what we put here and adjusted it slightly so that it fit perfectly. That's kind of a nice one that I like to use to make sure the shapes look good. Sometimes when you use that exact length, unless you need an exact length, the, the dots end up lining up weird. Now what if you want to change the size of the dots? Let's take a look at that. So in these stroke options, what we can actually do is adjust the weight of our stroke and that's going to increase or decrease the size of the dots on our dotted line. So if we were to preserve the length and adjust the gap, You'll notice that it changes every time. And you can even look down here how we have a couple of dots that are overlapping. That's because it's trying to preserve the gap length. So it's probably starting at this point, going around with the exact length that we inputted. And then that ends up putting a dot right on top of it here. That right there is why I like to go into the stroke options and use this sort of adjustment. And we have to have our object selected to do that but go into stroke options and use the aligning to the corners and path ends, adjusting it to fit. It, it lets Illustrator make that decision for us. But still, it doesn't just arbitrarily give us a number of dots. 
if we start to scale down the gap length, it will adjust as soon as it clips to something new that would fit, you know, rounding up or down, it's going to adjust the amount of dots uh, on our dotted line here. Okay, so that is mostly the first way to do a dotted line with the stroke options there in photo or in Illustrator. Now, we are going to use the blend tool. And with the blend tool, you can create a dotted line around any shape and adjust the sizes of the dots and more if you'd like. So let me show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and delete all of this stuff here and we're just going to create our dots. We're actually gonna make some dots. So I'm gonna click and hold on the rectangle tool, go to the ellipse tool, and create a circle. Now this is coming out weird because we were just doing the dotted line, but that's okay. Hold shift on that to create a perfect circle and let go. And what we'll do is just click on this right here, which swaps the fill and the stroke. So what we want is a fill and no stroke. And we just created a circle. And to show you that again, of course, see how we're creating by clicking and dragging. If we hold shift, it makes a circle. So we can actually make another circle over here that's even bigger. Now before we do this, what I will show you is if we had created our small circle, we can duplicate this out by holding Option or Alt on PC, duplicate it out just like that. And so we could create a line with the same exact size dots, just like we'd done before. If we go up to Object, down to Blend, down to Blend Options, we can actually blend these two shapes together, putting shapes in between. We can do smooth color, which if there is a color gradient, it'll look better. We can do a specified distance, that's kind of like setting a gap length, or we can specify steps. I'm going to specify steps and say I want four shapes in between these two, or four dots. Hit OK. It doesn't do anything yet. What I have to do is select both of these, go back up to Object, down to Blend. We adjusted the options, but what we can do is just press Make, and it's going to make that blend. Notice how it put one, two, three, four in between these two, just like that. So we can select this guy again, go up to Object, down to Blend, and we can go to Blend Options. And if we wanted a different number, we can actually preview it by checking this preview button. And we can use our up and down arrow keys or you can put in numbers and it's gonna specify the amount of dots in between. So if you need a specific amount of dots, you can do it just right here. Now also, if I hit okay, obviously these don't have enough space. So how do we adjust that? Well, what we can do is double click in here and click on one of our objects. We have two objects here. We have the blend that goes in between, but we have the first one and the last one. So what we can do is click on one of these. If we get a hold of just one of them, I kind of double clicked in there and we can drag it out. And you can see how the dots will just follow. It's like an accordion almost. The dots will follow and space out evenly. And I have eight dots in here. Now the other thing that we can do, we're gonna move this down here, is we can blend dots in between shapes of different sizes. In fact, we could do even multiple. So let me scale this down. I selected both and I'm holding Shift and Alt or Option to scale it down because I'm gonna create another dot over here, right here. So this isn't even a straight line, is it? We drag this back over. Let's scale this out a little bit so we have enough space in between. Now, before we make this blend, I had to play around a little bit, but there is a specific order that the blend is gonna make when you have multiple objects. So if you just have two objects and you're going from one to the other like we did before, it doesn't really matter. That blend is just gonna go from one to the other. But if you have multiple objects, let's say you have a small circle, a big circle, and then another small circle like we do on here, and you wanna kinda of do this line or however you wanna place this blend, and you wanna go from that small to big back to small, there's a specific order there, right? You don't want it to go small, small, and then big. You want it to go small, big, and then small. The order here depends on the layers in, uh, or the object layers in your layers panel. So it's gonna go from bottom to top. So whichever one you want to start the blend is on bottom. The one you want in the middle, if we have three, and then the next one, the next one, the next one, right? So if we take a look at our layers panel real quick over here in my properties, over to layers, you can also go to window down to layers. I have a couple of ellipses here. And if I hide these, I can figure out which one is where. 
So I need this top one, or this last one, I should say, to be on top, and the first one to be on bottom, and the middle one to be next up here. So it's gonna go from the bottom up, essentially. I actually thought it was gonna be how you select your objects, but it's not. It's in the layers panel, so kinda of troubleshooted that for you guys. But we're gonna select all these objects, and we're gonna go up to Object, down to Blend, and the blend options are gonna be the same, so we're just gonna hit Make. And what it did was it blended from this little shape to this big shape back down to this little shape over here. Now something interesting here, if we go back up to Object, down to Blend, and then we look at Blend Options, our specified steps are four right now. So there's four, one, two, three, four, in between each of these. We can specify more steps, whoa, not by that, not that many steps. I'm just pressing the up and down arrow key. And we can specify less steps, right? Just one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's how you can specify different amounts, or we can even go to specify distance, and that's gonna do something similar, where it's going to kind of round up to the next one and align it based on whatever the closest it can get to the distance is that you need, essentially. Um, the align to path we don't really need to use. If you're using objects, where, this is a dotted tutorial, not a blend tool <laughs> tutorial. So on the dotted ones, you don't, you don't have to have um, the, spec the align to path. That one doesn't matter because it's all circles. So we can just align to page. We can specify distance. We can specify steps and hit OK. Now the last thing I'll show you is if you wanted to apply this same blend, let's say to some sort of interesting path that you've created. So I'm just gonna use the pen tool and kind of create a path out here. Swap that so it looks like there's actually a path. In the blend tool's eyes, this is called a spine. So there's actually a spine here. It goes from here over to here. That's this spine. And what we can do is we can replace the spine with this curved spine over here. It's just a line, it's, it's just a path, but in blend tool world, it's called a spine. So what we can do is select both, go up to objects, we have our blend and our other path selected, go down to blend, and we can call replace spine. We can just select that right there. So what it did was it took that blend that we had and used the new path as if we'd placed it out here and had curves and everything with our path. So I know this got a little bit complicated. The first way that we showed you is, is, is gonna be the way that you guys use your dotted lines, I think. But I wanted to show you this other cool like blend tool. That's, that's kind of an interesting way you can create dotted lines. You can actually create a lot of different effects with it. But it's another way to create dotted lines with different variants if there's something there that you think you could use. Anyway, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'm Spencer from Pixel and Bracket, and I'll see you next time.